Welcome to Naive Investor. My name is Gustavo Sayani. Today is September 24th, 2018, and this is our episode number 366. Today we're looking at Tim. Uh, Tim is a pretty large uh, telecom. Uh, lots of cell phones in Brazil run using Tim. It's one of the few large markets such as uh, you know like oil and gas and stuff that is not a, a strong monopoly here or a duopoly or an outright oligopoly so what players we have here so it's tim claro vivo oi so we're talking about four and that's actually much better uh than like the oil sector for example uh, anyway, uh, large player here, and it's uh, it's an Italian company, so it's not only uh, present in Brazil by any means. But here, I think we're talking about the Brazilian arm of Tim. So, uh, what do we have here? So, uh, we have numbers as far back as 2016, so we, we can get the full year of 2017 still. Um, debt under control, liabilities to equity under control, current ratio here wasn't great, but at the same time not a tragedy, so that... Uh, we, did, we did see a bump here in 2016 in terms of earnings, but you know, like no losses here. Uh, in terms of earnings, free cash flow a lot more erratic. So the multiple here wasn't so great. And when looked through the prism of free cash flow, uh, again, it, it seems like fairly fairly priced. Okay, so it's all good, but perhaps not the most enticing opportunity. All right. Uh, so now I have a little incantation here. Let's see, next year. Cool. It's just uh, a lot of things just to automate this, the years here, because in aggregate, they take time. Great. Uh, and I'm adding uh, another row here, just, you know, housekeeping. Yeah, cool. So the nice thing about this formula is that you can copy and paste and we'll take the year here. Great. So uh, we want to look at this for the year 2017. So to get the DFP. And we do what we typically do. We look at debt uh, and we go on and on look at financial health and then look at uh, the, the performance and then we look at uh, the company's price relative to those things cool so consolidated 2017 so they're stating their net equity here at 18 billion 151 liabilities so current liabilities 7224 plus another 7224 so it's easy to see liabilities to equity under one so you know not that uh, loans and financing, 13.52 short term, plus 33.39 longer term. So I see something here that I don't quite understand. Arrendamento. Mercantil financeiro. Let's try to see what this is. Ah, mercantil 
Let's see. What the hell is this? Or what the heck is this? Sorry. Or I see, so it seems like they're doing some risk managing management with this instrument or this set of instruments. All right. What I want, wanted to know if this could be considered debt. Uh, I would say probably not. But the nice thing is that there's a, a big margin here, here so that even if you consider this debt, it would still be inside our rough uh, spectrum of 0 to 0 0.5. And the total liabilities here are at 0 0.8. So, you know, we can't really complain. We really can't. Uh, so now current ratio, let's see where this is at right now. So 7607. Okay, you can already tell that this is not beautiful divided by 7224 so 1.05 and again uh, if we follow Ben Graham in, in his uh, rule of thumb he demands a bare minimum of 1.5 here of course you know we can't overrule these things if we know better and I cannot say that I know any better uh, for Tim so uh, you know if I just stick to, to the main course here, this is not uh, very uh, auspicious. All right, onwards to revenue. So uh, 2017 net revenue, 16,234. And for 2016, since we're here, 15,617. Profits. They posted a profit of one, two, three, five, rounding to the nearest. Okay. So I'm suffering a little bit with this computer. Since I'm recording the video, uh, my the quick time here makes everything go slower. So, you know, I'm always reconsidering, you know, what to do here. But I, I am aware of the problem. All right, onwards to um, free cash flow. Let's see. Okay, so operating cash flow 5404 minus investment cash flow of 4401. So almost around billion in free cash flow. So now I want to make sure we're looking at the correct five-year averages here. Let's see. Nope. So I'm going to do a little formula here too. Yeah, 
need to turn this off. See if it goes faster. And indeed it does. So I'm taking this zero zero ten one. So this is basically the offset here. Let's see. All right. So this is the 10 year average. And this will be the five year average. So Still pretty slow. Um, I'm not very happy with this this new machine here. To tell you the truth. All right. So now, just making a five-year average here. So as you can see, the the recent five years, this regarding inflation, have been superior to the average of ten years. But once we get to inflation, th these numbers seem pretty identical here. Free cash flows two thirds of of uh, earnings over the last ten years. So now, what we need to do here is to update the actual market cap. So, uh, team participations market. Yeah, and let's see. Twenty six billion six hundred and seventeen. Let me double check this because I think I said the wrong number. Twenty eight billion. All right, so one thing that's striking is that the price itself has been resilient because uh, stocks have fallen, fallen quite a bit over the last year. So I don't know if this the, the other price was before the up. Anyway, the price movement there is relatively less important what we want to see here is these averages so let me just per persist this 22.73 17.59 38.21 30.15. and 30.15 cool so these numbers here unless we can count on growth for tim they show a company that's fairly priced, you see, uh, and, and not perhaps uh, yeah, I'm really trying to find an angle here because you know if we follow Warren Buffett's dictum of buying wonderful companies at a fair price, and we kind of stated that the price is fair. Uh, what would uh, be left of us to do is to decide whether Tim is a wonderful company. And as a user, I can tell you that I don't think Tim is a wonderful company. Okay, it's a good company, but not wonderful. It does its job with problems, you know, the sector. Yeah, it's amazing what it does if we think about it, you know, like providing internet over air for a lot of people at, a, at the speeds that it does. 
Of course, you know, we have, there's a lot of people working really hard to make this happen. But from our perspective here is like, is this a clear, do we know that Tim will be, you know, like relevant 10 years from now? Uh, and that's really hard to say. So this is why, you know, Tim to me falls in, in the too hard pile here. So fairly priced, a good company. It's cool, but it wouldn't be like in our top five, top six, or even top 10 uh, investment ideas here. So with that said, uh, in our next episode, we'll come back and take a look at a different company. Uh, and we're finishing, you know, the, the years 2017. So uh, probably still with a company and look for which we'll look at the full year 2017. If you're still here, thank you very much. And if you're still here and you're not a s subscriber, please consider clicking or tapping on the subscribe button so that you get notifications on our future analyses. I invite you to watch our past episodes. We do have 362 at this point. And I always invite you to watch our future episodes as well. Uh, if you have questions, suggestions, criticism, and especially if you spotted mistakes in the analysis, please leave a message and I'll write you back as soon as I, I can. Uh, thank you very much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.